All right, we are on chapter nine of Morgan Housel's The Psychology of Money. Chapter nine is wealth is what you don't see. And we have to start here, I think, by making a different, um, making a distinction between richness and wealth. So lots of people are rich, but um, that doesn't necessarily mean they're wealthy. So a rich person is somebody who has a good current level of income. Somebody, you know, who's maybe earning way above the average. But a wealthy person is somebody who has a lot of money and a lot of assets which they haven't yet spent. So to make this point, Morgan Housel starts with cars again. Um, you know, the last one was the man in the car paradox. And he says that when he was working as a valet in L.A. in the early 2000s, the most important thing was how you looked, was your appearance. There are still places like that. You know, we all know people like that. We all know places like that. All they care about is what other people think and looking good and everything. So he said there was a guy who used to show up in a Porsche. Um, and he says, we'll call him Roger. And one day Roger showed up in a beat up Honda at the hotel where uh, the author used to work as a valet. And he said, what happened to your Porsche? And the guy just said, oh, I got repossessed. So now he's driving around this beat up old Honda. So Morgan makes the point that there's a lot of people who look wealthy because of the cars they drive, because of the clothes they wear, because of the houses they live in, whatever. But all those possessions tell you is that, let's say it's a $100,000 car, they've now got $100,000 less than they did before they bought the car, or they've got $100,000 more of debt, which means they might be rich, but you need a certain level of income to be able to afford that debt, to have it given to you in the first place. But getting rich and getting wealthy are very, very different. What most people actually want is wealth, and wealth is unspent assets that give you freedom and give you control and give you options. Because let's say if you earn $50,000 or £50,000 a month, are you rich? Yeah, you're very, very rich. But let's say if you spend $49,000 £49, a month, are you rich? No. no. Because as soon as you lose your job, as soon as that income comes to an end or disappears, as we all know it can, um, you know, you might have a Ukraine, you might have a COVID, you might have a, a Brexit, whatever, you know, incomes change, incomes change all the time. Then, um, then what do you do? Then you're poor, then you're dirt broke. So he goes back to the example of um, who's it? Richard Reed, who he mentioned in the first chapter, Richard Reed is a guy who worked as a cleaner all his life, only ever lived in one house. Nobody knew he had any money, but when he died, I think he had eight million dollars. And so everyone was surprised. Now, because wealth is what you don't see, it's hard to find wealthy role models. You don't know who's wealthy because, you know, there might be one guy who's driving around in a Ferrari and he's living on the absolute razor's edge of insolvency because after he's paid off all his car finance and everything else for the month, he's left with, you know, £100 for the month. So he's desperate. But then there might be another guy who drives around in a Ferrari but he could have bought 10 Ferraris. He only bought one. Um, you know, so it's very difficult to tell people from their possessions who's actually wealthy. And I would argue that the person who's living in the big house, paying the mortgage that's stretching them, riding the flash car that's stretching them and everything else, they're a lot poorer than somebody who just, you know, maybe they make 200 grand a year, but then there's someone who makes 20 grand a year, but their lifestyle costs them 12 grand a year. That person's richer than the guy with the Ferrari in the big house because they don't have the debt and they actually have a bit of breathing room at the end of the month, at the end of the year, whatever. They, they might even save a bit of money. Hell, who knows? Imagine that if you made 12000 a year. Oh, you'd starve to death in London. But if you made 12000 a year and somebody else you knew made 50000 a year and you both worked for 10 years and at the end of it, you'd manage to save a hundred, you know, maybe you know, save 120 grand. And I, let's say you managed to save 10000 and the other person had saved not a penny um, and nothing to show for it. That would be bizarre, wouldn't it? But you'd be the wealthy person. Take the concept, you know, 10,000 isn't, isn't any, any measure of wealth. But you'd be wealthier than the person who'd made all that money and pissed it away. So have you ever been in that situation? I've been in that situation where I made a lot of money and I pissed it away on a good time and nice holidays and everything. And now I think, did I have a good time? Yeah, I had a great time. I had a great time. Do I regret it? No. Would I feel happier if I'd saved half of it? Yes. Oh my God, yes. There'd be no stress, there'd be no worrying, there'd be options. You know, if I lost a job or I had an emergency or the car needed repairing, I could just say, yeah, there's the money that I didn't spend. 
it gives you options. If I was sick and I had to take some time off work, I don't get sick pay. It would give you options, right? So you see riches. Riches are what people are spending, but all riches are is, you know, um, that means I haven't got that money anymore. Oh, wow, look at that, 20,000 pound Rolex. I think I'd rather have the 20,000 pounds in my bank and, uh, and a Casio, seriously, because I can tell the time just as well. Well, you can tell it better with a Casio than with, you know, look at me, I wear an expensive watch, aren't I rich, aren't I great? It must make me a better person than you. I'd rather you didn't look at me, but I've still got all that money in the bank and I can do whatever I want, and Casios tell the time better. Quartz always tells the time more accurately than automatic watches. All right, so just an opinion, but actually it's a fact. <laughs> it's a fact. Do you need all these really flash things to feel good about yourself? Or would you feel good about yourself if you just dressed comfortably, if you just lived in a house you could easily pay the mortgage off, but you knew that, oh, I've got two children, I've already got the money to put them both for university. Not that you want to raise brats who get everything paid for. You know, I don't think that's good. You need to give a little bit of tough love. Um, and this is still to do with money. This is the psychology of money because it all comes down to the money you've got. Um, so yeah, Richard Reed was nobody's financial role model while he was alive because nobody could see that he was wealthy. Wealth is hidden. Wealth is what you can't see. So there are lots of wealthy people with flash things, um, you know, but their wealth is the cars they didn't buy, the watches they didn't buy, the the, the, the the big houses they didn't buy. This is one thing I don't understand. You get a house, you make a bit more money. I think I touched on this in the previous recording. So then you uh, you sell it and you buy a bigger house. Why? Why not just pay off this house? I know people who live in really, really beautiful places, expensive places. But I've, I'd, I'd never buy a flat, for example. You know, you buy this fancy flat or a penthouse or whatever, but you're paying as much on service charges, which can be raised indefinitely. I think um, Ballymore has got in trouble for that, haven't they? Which can be raised indefinitely. And so you might end up paying, you know, 20 grand a year on a service charge. Oh, but I made 500,000 a year. But why are you paying 20 grand? You own the damn place. Well, no, you don't because it's a leasehold. Um, it doesn't make sense. Beautiful facilities, steam room, swimming pool, gym, etc. Well, I can do that, 20 pounds a month, gym. Swimming pool, as you said, true. Yeah, sure, I have to leave my house. What a drag. Um, so, having wealth is more rewarding in the long run than riches. And Bill Mann, the investor, once said that the fastest way to feel rich is to go and spend a lot of money. But then being wealthy is absolutely the opposite of that. A lot of people say, I want to be rich. I want to make a million. Um, this is something the author said. I want to make a million dollars back. What they actually mean is they want to feel rich. So they want to spend a million dollars which is exactly the opposite of having wealth. Imagine being one of these lottery winners, you know, it might be tens of millions, whatever, but you win a life-changing amount of money, then you go mad, you go out on your holidays and uh, cars and flash houses, and then five years later you burn for it all. Well, guess what, how are you gonna make that money back? You sell all your assets and go back to the life that you thought was shitty? It's, it's madness, you know. Um, maybe I'm just too old and too conservative, but I do think it's madness. Rather have some, Assets as well. Assets, unspent wealth, or an asset, something that makes money. The classical example, you know, I own lots of houses and they pay me five grand a month for rent, or ten grand a month for rent, or a hundred grand a month for rent, whatever. They're assets. But then I'm still an idiot if I go out and spend all of that hundred thousand every month or whatever it is. I really believe that. So I think I've explained that chapter quite well. I hope it made sense to you. I hope you got some use out of it. Um, so if you want to get wealthy, just you know, don't spend everything you earn, save some, invest some, do whatever, but don't spend it all because one day the tap gets turned off. It might never get turned off, but in all likelihood, one day the tap gets turned off. You're making tons of money, spending tons of money. You think it will never end. It ends. It usually ends. But if you save most of it, then well, that's fine. You know, oh, I'm not going to make any money for the next five years. That's okay because I save money for 10 years and it's a hell of a lot more than I need. That's the best place to be. That's freedom. That's control. That's wealth. That's what wealth gives you. But nobody's going to see it. All right. Next chapter coming soon. All right. Thank you.